Hello, I'm JW. This time a socket, and this one is faulty, surprisingly enough. And uh, we're going to take this apart to see what's actually broken inside. And this particular one is actually fairly recent. The uh, label on the back, which you may not be able to see there, indicates it was manufactured in August 2018. This video is only made in January 2019, so only a few months ago. And the problem with this is that neither of the outlets actually work, so there's some kind of internal connection failure. And in terms of the switches, that one works fine. This one kind of works when it can be uh, bothered, but uh, it's sort of very uh, spongy and gungy. So let's uh, have a look at this and see what's inside. So here's the offending item. It's just a plain white one. Double uh, switches there, obviously one for each side. And this is also supposed to be a double pole, as it says on the back here. And uh, 13 amp, 250 volts, very typical. BS1363. That being the standard for these things. And this is branded CED in the case of this one. And it says there August 18 when it was apparently manufactured. So, so this is only at most four months old or so. Now, so the problem with this one is that the thing itself looks perfectly fine and normal. But in terms of the actual switch, this one here, as you see, has this sort of gungy effect there. And it doesn't essentially turn off most of the time. This side, perfectly normal. And then the other problem as well is even when these are both in the on position, neither of these outlets actually works correctly. So at least one of the other uh, line or the neutral or both has failed in some way. So uh, a bit of a fail there. So it has actually clicked off there, but again, it uh, doesn't really want to work as intended. So let's uh, get this thing open. Now, this being a fairly cheap one, it's fixed together with screws. So it should be relatively straightforward just to uh, remove the screws. And then we shall see what's contained inside. Now I've also just broken the metal at the side here, because it's not clear whether that's sort of holding something in or not. I don't think it is actually, but uh, no, it seems fairly loose there. But we should be able to now hopefully take the thing apart and see what we have inside. So yep, there we have it. So this is the front plate here. And um, we can see the actual shutter mechanism there. Essentially when you put the earth uh, pin in from the plug there, it will just press down on that tab. And there it just opens the two plastic shutters that cover over the line and neutral holes there. And this is basically the cheaper style of shutter where it just needs something shoved in the earth hole. And just opens that up there. Of course the spring has just uh, popped off there. So uh, nothing surprising with that. And then we can see obviously what we've got inside. Now in terms of the earth bar, that does appear to be uh, detachable there. So that's essentially the two earth terminals on the back there. That also forms part of the things where the earth pin would go in. That's better the actual contact there. So it comes in from the front and then you've got the bent in pieces on the back, which of course uh, grip onto the pin in the plug. And as I saw that did go down to the actual holes on the side so that when you put the screws through to connect to the back box, that one is actually connected to earth. So unlike that uh, pile of junk we saw in a previous one, and inside there, we've got the actual bars come across to the actual line and neutral holes there. And we've got our two switches on the top. So inside there, we've got the two terminals here. This is the line on this side and the neutral over here. And that's where your wires are coming from the other side. A single screw to secure those. And then the uh, actual conductors comes across this one on the top, into the top of this switch here. And then this piece should remove and then it continues across, obviously, for the switch over this side. So it basically goes to the terminal here, and again the terminal on this side. And then the other one is the same, and it comes underneath. And there is another bit of plastic in there which should uh, lift out. Although it's underneath the actual wires there. And again, it comes into the switch, and then obviously goes to the terminals here via the switch. And of course, the one over here via the other one there. And the terminals here, it seems that the uh, top and the bottom are actually two entirely separate components. That is rather loose and flappy in there. So it's just two items just uh, placed on top of each other. Now the way these work is that when the top is actually pressed, that's when the switch is on because the conductors basically come underneath. So this conductor here is connected to the movable component and then that one there also goes to the movable component. So when the back is pressed, that basically brings that up onto the bottom of here and then the power goes through obviously to the contacts at the bottom. And then the same with this one, so it's coming in at the top. That is connected to this permanently. 
And then this moving piece is what connects to this, which again then goes down to the socket contact. So this is where the problem is. And uh, in terms of this side not working, it would seem that whatever's happened here has somehow affected the other side, though it's difficult to see uh, quite why that was, unless of course this one, when it's pressed by this uh, rather obviously flattened off thing, wasn't actually making correct contact either. As I say, both sides were not actually working. So uh, let's just see if we can take these out and see what's happened under that one. Now, so these are actually separate components here. As you can see, that's just a uh, sort of U-shaped piece of material there, copper or brass. And then this thing, little uh, actually pegs rather than just heat state on, they just need to be press fit transparent plastic pegs holding the uh, contacts in position. So uh, yeah, the whole lot will just in fact uh, lift out rather easily. Now just because we can, we just use the uh, usual magnets and uh, none of those parts appear to be attracted to it. The screws of course uh, will be as they're obviously just uh, steel screws. Not entirely sure what that piece of uh, stuff there is. Oh, that's a piece of the uh, strap from the actual socket piece there, which again is going to be galvanised steel or something similar to that. But uh, yeah, none of those seem to be attracted, and the uh, springs in the actual switches are, but the actual current carrying components, of course, uh, don't appear to be. Now here's a look at the uh, terminals and the switches in a bit more detail. So this is one of the Kind of just coming in here, that's where the wires would go, and it just basically goes straight across to this one, and also this one for the uh, switch on the other side. And uh, this one is the one that wasn't working. You see, there's that black residue there where the actual thing on the switch itself has basically melted onto the piece of metal, although the metal itself does still move reasonably freely. And if you look at the end of these things here, the uh, little contact points there are all fairly well damaged and blackened on uh, all four. So this one here is moving correctly and of course the other contact would be just over the top of this. And then this one, although it does move, presumably because of that melting thing there, the uh, actual plunger wasn't pressing down on it far enough. And of course this wasn't then coming up to meet the other contact there. That one say moves okay. Again this one moves okay as well. And then at this end, this is the one where the switch wasn't actually moving correctly at all, and we can see that this is uh, moving slightly, but it's basically jammed in there somehow. So it's definitely not moving. Let's say that's how it should work. And you see there, it just moves slightly and then tends to jam on the actual thing there. And if we force it down, it will fold up eventually, but then it tends to stay in the up position. Now if we just move that out of there, and see on the edge of this there's some melting of the plastic material and we can see the residue of black on the sides of this piece as well. So there you see the sides have obviously got hot and it's melted off the black plastic in several places along the side and of course that will have deformed the piece underneath so this no longer fits in there correctly hence it's going to stick and uh, bind up on the side when you attempt to press the switch and the colour of this is actually slightly darker than the one next to it as well. Again, suggesting that this has obviously got hot and overheated at some point. So we've got this side is the line that's failed. This is the line coming in here. And obviously that wasn't connecting there, so this side was basically just neutral connected only. And then this side was the opposite because it was coming in from here. So it's basically the uh, line was connecting and the neutral was not. So uh, not a particularly desirable failure. And uh, interesting that literally both sides have failed as well suggesting that uh, both of the socket outlets here, the left and the right, must have had some uh, moderately large load attached. And of course that's leading to uh, overheating on both sides of the switches there. But oddly enough it's a different one on each side. And this is definitely a thermoplastic because if you see how uh, flexible and bendy that is, so definitely the kind that's just going to melt when any kind of heat is applied to it. See, it's also been uh, injection moulded there, not a particularly uh, wonderful quality. You can see in there where that number four is, it's all uh, sort of pulled up and uh, misshapen around there. So, uh, definitely a fairly cheap example of these things. 
and even where the actual socket uh, contacts go in, again any slight uh, overheating of this plastic and they will just deform and shift out of position. So uh, definitely not a quality item. So another failed socket and uh, this being the main culprit, the fact it's made out of a thermoplastic material which will bend and soften when any kind of moderate heating is applied there and of course uh, as soon as it happens the conductors will shift out of position and therefore make the problem worse or in the case of this one result in the thing not making any contact at all and of course then the thing doesn't work. So uh, that's it for this time, until next time thanks for watching.